Good morning and welcome to House of Power Outreach. Welcome and happy Easter to everyone, the resurrection, the day of Jesus, and Jesus is risen. We praise God for today. Well, we are excited that, you know, God is moving and, and just the power of God that's over us. This, this is what a, what a blessed day for us that we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ and eternal life given to us. And we're just going to have a, a blessed service and a great time. We're glad to have each and every one of you here today and, and just uh, tuning in and viewing our sermon and our, and our messages. Uh, thank you for our church family. We love our church family. We were so blessed and honored. One of our youth, uh, Navy, her birthday was this past week, and we got a chance to do a Zoom and, and just, we, we love our youth, love our people, and so we're just blessed for Navy Tejerina turning 16 and just our, our blessed church family that have been with us, and, and we just thank you. All of our ministers, all of our leaders, just all, everyone that's just a part of our church, we just thank you. And those of you who, uh, whenever we get to come back together, we, we welcome you to come to House of Power Outreach at 7 Applegate Circle in Round Rock, Texas. We have our Wednesday night service at 7 p.m. and Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. with youth service, children's ministry, men's ministry, women's ministry, singles. Uh, we 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 you know we want to serve and minister to all, and and we are just blessed. I would I would like for all of you just to join me in prayer. Um, I don't have any specific prayer requests, but I want us to pray over our nation right now. Uh, if you bow your heads and let's pray. Father, we just thank you in the name of Jesus. We, we pray, Father, that over our land, over our entire nation, that you said wherever we place our feet, call it God's land. Lord, we declare God's land to be healed. I pray for everyone that may have tested positive for coronavirus. I pray for healing and quick recovery. I pray, Lord God, protection over all of us, Lord, that you are, are covering us, Lord God, in your protection. And this virus uh, cannot uh, get a hold of another person. And I thank you, Lord God, as we continue to, to walk and go before you, Lord God, that we are loving on one another, that they'll see the joy of life in each and every person that they run into. Thank you for people that have gone to visit loved ones and, and standing beside uh, the elderly, Lord, that we, we lift them up and encourage them and strengthen them. I pray over households, Lord God, and, and I just plead the blood of Jesus over every doorpost, Lord. And Father, I just thank you for life entering into households. I thank you for families being renewed and, and getting along, that this is not a time of stress or frustration. This is a time to come together and love on each other. And as for their house, they all shall serve the Lord. And Lord, we just thank you for a good report that's coming, Lord God, as this, this disease begins to, to, to die out, begin to go away, Lord God. And, and Lord, we just thank you for the revelations that you are delivering to everyone. And we give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us in prayer. The Bible is, is so clear about prayer and how powerful it is to be in prayer together. And so we welcome that. We also welcome any needs that you may have. You can email us or go to our church website and just send us a prayer request at at uh, h o p o church dot org, and we welcome you to do so. We love prayer, love praying with you. Uh, we also that's you go to our website if, to give to the church and give to the ministry. Um, we uh, just are thankful to God that whatsoever man sows, that shall he reap. That God loves cheerful givers, and we love for you to be a part of our ministry to help us and and reaching out to the entire nation, entire community, and that we you will see all the opportunities and ways that you you can give uh, to be a blessing to the ministry. Uh, Pastor Rita sends her love and just I'm blessed with an amazing wife who's, who's walked side by side with me in the ministry, our, our, our co-pastor, and, and we, are, we, we love you guys so, so much and can't wait to see everyone in person and, and, and you know, just, just to be a blessing. Well, one thing we do at House of Power Outreach is uh, together as we take communion together. I thought today would be a great day to uh, receive communion uh, as, as we are getting ready to celebrate uh, this time on the resurrection of Jesus. And it was right before uh, the, the Last Supper, right before Jesus was about to be betrayed, uh, he, he stood up and he said, uh, do this in remembrance of me. Now, I'll give you time and, and you can, obviously, you can pause this if you need to, uh, to go and get whatever you need to take communion, cracker, juice, orange juice, whatever. 
We just want, it's about you being a part of the fellowship and you're doing this in remembrance of Christ, not about the contents that you put in you, but the remembrance of Christ that you do this, do this knowing that God loves you. He cares for you. And, and he said in his word, I prepare table before you in the presence of your enemy. And sometimes we can be our own enemy. And I just want you just to to step back and just receive from God. He said the, the, the bread and he said, he said, this is my body. And he wanted us to take of his body and every part of him that we will receive it. So if you are prepared and, and you've gotten everything you need to have in place, uh, I would like for you to just to take the bread and, 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 and just to begin to prepare to receive that as the body of Christ. So let's take this together. Then he presented the cup, cup in a representation of his blood, blood that was shed for the forgiveness of our sins and the cleansing of us from unrighteousness. And, and so as you begin, as you prepare, you grab your cup and receive this with me at, of the, the cleansing of our Lord Jesus. Now, if you would just pray with me once more, so we are praying. We just like to seal that 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 uh, that appointment with God or that uh, that communion with God. Father, we just thank you for the opportunity to receive communion and and come together. And even though we may be buildings apart and spaces apart, that we're together in the unity of the faith and unity of our spirit. Lord God, I thank you for just the love of family coming up on each and every person that received we thank you lord god as we take upon in your body lord god your body that 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 delivers and sets free i thank you for settling minds and bringing forth peace and bringing forth healing and restoration and bodies in the name of jesus and we thank you lord god for this communion that we receive it in the name of the father the son and the holy ghost we give you praise for it in jesus name Amen, amen, amen. Well, we want to uh, get into the Word, and it is messages relating and obviously relating to Easter, but we will just want to uh, enter into to the Word of God. And, and the message for what I have for today is that Jesus remembered. And I, I love the fact that God never forgets anything about us. He, he places us, in the, we're in the palm of his hands and cannot be taken out. So he remembered in resurrection peace together the, the broken. Luke chapter 23, in verse 39 through, 30, and through 43, it says, One of the criminals who hung there heaped abuse on him, are you not the Christ, he said, save yourselves self and us. But the other one rebuked him, saying, do you not even fear God since you are under the same judgment? We are punished justly, for we are receiving what our actions deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, truly, I tell you today, you will be with me in paradise. Jesus remembered, remembered this, this, this thief on the cross and in this place and, and even in the worst area. And, and, and even before we start to judge the other thief who was complaining and, and was yelling at Jesus, we tend to say that, especially when something happened, you know, we, we tend to say, Jesus, why did you let this happen? Or why didn't you save them from this? Or why didn't this happen? And, 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 some, and we have to step back and just realize that Jesus remembers. Jesus remembered us and he, he takes us in and he, he loves on us and he cares for us. And so we have to get back to the point of the joy of, of my salvation that God knows what he is doing. A thief like anyone else has a need to belong, and Jesus was always about making people know that they belong, especially those who felt unwanted and unaccepted. There's, there's nothing greater than to have that 
peace of being wanted and being accepted. And, and in our time where there's so many opportunities for people to reject and so many opportunities for people to, to, to mislead or, or just even just try to push people away. But I, I pray in the name of Jesus that your house is having a resurrection of, of receiving one another today. And, and for, for the rest of this time that you're beginning to grow together like never before. And so G he just said, Lord, remember me when you go into paradise. And he said, today you'll be with me. The warm presence of God will restore anyone from a long history of being cold in a cold world. I, I often think about this being saved at, at, at an early age at about 14 years old, but then you know, straying away from God. And as I was older and, and was working in a place, there was an amazing lady who would witness to me all the time. And she would tell me, you have a calling on your life. God has called you. Your mother's praying for you. And she was constant about it. And she took me to an event. And it was, it was an event that this, this minister who would taken these kids off the streets. And they were doing music. And they were doing, you know, they were singing. And I will never forget one of the kids who gave his testimony. He was older, but he was still trying to get his GED. And he talked about how abusive his dad was. And I had some anger issues and some things that I was dealing with, dealing with my own biological father. And when he stood up and he gave his testimony, he says, and when I see my dad, and I was sitting in the audience thinking, yeah, I, I bet you want to just punch him in the face. You know, I'm thinking like, call me, I'll help you. He said, I just want to hug him because I got something good from him. If I've survived this long, that means there was something in him that came to me. And I'd never heard someone express such an attitude of forgiveness before. And I broke in that one moment that my tears began to stream down my face. And I, I hardly ever cried before then, but I began to just weep in the middle. Didn't care who was around me, didn't care anything about it because I realized God was remembering me at that point. And, and from that day forward, I walked before God and I, I rededicated my life to Christ and, and just said, God, whatever you want to do, use me. I, I surrender. And I've been walking with God ever since. And it, it takes that time where we're thinking that there's this rejection thing going on. Jesus remembers you. He, there's a, I, he remembers you. And that, that's, that's, we're, we'll get into that a little bit better. But I want you to know he hasn't forgotten you. The warm presence of God. It is warm. It is easy to be like the angry thief on a cross when, we, when what we believed in looks like it is losing. But allow God to remind you that eternity holds you. It may look like you're losing, like I remember reading this in leadership, that, that uh, just because someone looks like they're winning the race, they're running a race that you're not in. You're not in that race. So that's not one that you need to win. You need to win what God has called you to, and that's to love him with all your heart, soul, mind, and body. And it is this part of, of resurrection and Easter where we all come together and all celebrate the resurrection of Christ and thank God for Jesus getting up. So in Matthew chapter 27 and verse 50 through 53, it says, when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he yielded up his spirit. So he's on the cross. Everything has happened. And at that moment, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earthquake and the rocks were split. The tombs broke open and the bodies of many saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After Jesus' resurrection, when they had come out of the tombs, they entered the holy city and appeared to many people. But an amazing, amazing part of, of Jesus. And, and the, in that part where you see where it says the veil of the temple was broken, there used to be where only the, the priests could go into this veil, into this temple part. But when Jesus died and, and, and he opened up the opportunity for us to come boldly to the throne room of God, you don't need anyone to take you in there. You don't need me to take you in there. You can go straight to God and, and, and present to him and speak directly to him as he ministers back to you. Resurrection put mankind back together and pieces that were buried for death are raised for the glory of God. Pieces, things that were 
just buried in your life. Things, uh, dreams of, of me even being a minister as it was that were buried, that was long away, buried beneath hate, buried beneath hurt, buried beneath pain. Jesus, Jesus, when he rose, he, he resurrected and they all came out and that, that saint that's in you and even the struggling you, there's the saint of God that's in you that you realize that God is picking that up and picking you up and saying, I still have you, your plan, the plan that I have for you is still in in place. Jeremiah 29 11, I know the thoughts that I have for you, thoughts that are good, not evil, so that you'd have an expected end. There's an expectation God has of you of doing great things. That anyone around you, even if it was a close family member that expected you to fail, that wasn't God's expectation. God's expected expectations for you is to be an overcomer, be victorious, that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. And that, that just blesses, that, that is just Day and overwhelming that God is, doesn't show favoritism in his mercy and his grace. He gives liberally to all. So God knows everything about us, even the very hairs on our heads and a life, and, and the very hairs on our heads are numbered, and a life shattered into millions of pieces is gathered in Jesus' resurrection. And what I would want to tell you at this point is Jesus remembered. And ever looked at it this way, and as I heard it, he remembered us back to himself. And death could no longer separate us from peace. He remembered us. Remembered. He put your members back together. Remember, you were, remember your innocence. Remember before the abuse. Remember before the addiction. God is putting you back together. This is, this is your day. This is your time where God puts you back together. I, I uh, had a little boy tell me that once. Even a sixth grader comes up to me. He says, Mr., thank you for remembering me. And I'm thinking, kid, I don't know who you are now. He goes, no, sir. Before, I, before your speech today, he says that I was in pieces. My parents were getting a divorce. I got friends that have been abusive to me and bullying me. I was in pieces. I didn't know which direction. But after hearing you speak, that put me back together. I pray today that some of you are receiving, being put back together. You're not a mess. You're not trash. You're not thrown away. The goodness of God is bringing you together. You're not losing your mind. I pray over your emotions, that your emotions will be protected, gathered in, because Jesus has risen for you. Amen. You say amen to yourself, because Jesus remembered us back to himself, and death could no longer separate us from peace. One of the greatest thing is as we're serving Jesus and giving our life to Christ, that death no longer is a threat to us. The Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. That death is no longer a threat. The very threat of death is gone. Jesus picked us up, gathered us into eternal life with him, and, and forever and ever we'll spend it with Jesus. So Jesus didn't, didn't come to get God out of heaven and into the earth he came to get God out of heaven and into us. And praise God for that. That he came to get God out of heaven and into us. To live in us. To dwell in us. To walk with us and be with us. So that torn apart part of us that, that feels like, man, does anyone even remember all the things that I've been through? Remember all the hurt that I've been through? What Jesus does. Even if no other person does, God does. And he says, I'm trying to put you back together. Would you receive my grace today? Would you receive my mercy today? Your mind, you can, your thoughts, you're not losing your mind. I, I want to let you know that there's a remembering coming about you. In Genesis chapter 8, verse 1 through 2, about the flood of Noah and flooded for 40 days and 40 nights. And I mean, you have to be thinking you're in that much rain for that long. But in, in, in verse 1, it says, but God remembered Noah. You got to think that God had told him, given him all those instructions to build an ark. It's going to rain, to do all those things. And you got to think that he's, he's floating for 40 days, 40 nights. And man, when is this thing going to be over? When am I going to get out of here? All these animals and all the things that are in there. But this verse says, but God remembered Noah. Can you pray that over yourself and speak that over yourself? But God remembered you too. But God remember me. But God remembered. And so it would, and all the animals and livestock that were with him in the ark. And God sent a wind over the earth and the waters began to subside. 
The springs of the deep and the floodgates of the heavens were closed and the rain from the sky was restrained. I love that, that God remembered they need dry ground. God remembered that you need a miracle. God remembered that you need a blessing. God remembered that you need a child that needs to be freed and, and be set free and, and maybe be incarcerated. We just say that for the system, for, for God to be able to minister there, God remembered what you prayed. He remembered what you believed. He remembered when you were crying out. He sees all your tears. He remembered and he got up on your behalf. And Father, we just, we just thank God at that time right there that you need to know you are not forgotten. We know how miserable it can feel like to be forgotten. The light of Jesus will shine through the strongest and longest of storms. The light will ultimately shine if you'll just stay with it. Doesn't matter about the strength of the storm or the length of the storm. God will be the last one standing when it's all said and done. Just always know he remembers you. Noah could have given up with that much rain coming against him, but God remembered him and put Noah back together with God's ending. I want you to understand God has a great ending for you. God has a great ending life for you, a great plan for you. And that ending is, is for his purpose. I, I was thinking too that one of the, one of the more great times, and I could go story after story forever, but, but even doing a, a, a teacher's professional develop day, I never forget this. I'm speaking for, for three hour presentation. And so even in those long presentations, we do activities and stuff. So at the end of the presentation, people are gathered around me and they're talking to me. And, and I felt someone grab my hand. I couldn't see their face, but I felt them grab my hand and slip a piece of paper into my hand, which I thought at first I thought that was weird and, and creepy. Because I'm like, if that's money, that don't look right. And, and just, I just look weird. So I just shoved the paper in my pocket. And when I got to my car, I opened up to see what it was. And she'd written on a post-it note, this lady. And she, she in her note, and that the, only, the only way I knew it was a lady, just, just from the, the pack of, but I didn't get to see her face, couldn't make out who she was. But her note said, I did not plan to attend a meeting today. I had come to this school to clean out my desk because I was going home to take my life. This is after hearing what you had to say, I know, I know that I have something valuable to give. Now, I believe with all my heart. Now, I didn't preach that day. I just gave the simple speech of professional development and activities and all the stuff that I normally would do. But it saved her life. She was coming to take her life. Your words matter. God remembered who, whoever was praying for her. God remembered their prayer and said on a day that was most likely, it was a Tuesday morning, by the way. It wasn't Sunday. It wasn't church time. It was a time where she was showing up for work or showing up to give up. But God got, got in there one more time. And I believe that your words are that powerful and they matter that much. Uh, talk is cheap. Only time talk is cheap when the walk is weak. And I want you to understand, keep your walk up and the talk will match it. In Ezekiel 37 and verses 7 through 12, this is a valley of dry bones. These bones are, are all over. It's just bones. And so I, I'm going to pick it up in verse 7. But if you go further up, that's what they were seeing. And it, it, he, asked the, he asked the prophet, can these bones live? And the prophet said, surely you know. And, and so he said, and the Lord told him, prophesy these bones. So I prophesied as I had been commanded. And as I prophesied, there was suddenly a noise rattling, and the bones came together bone to bone. As I looked on, the tendons appeared on them. Flesh grew and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy son of man and tell the breath that this is what the Lord God says. Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe into these slain so that they may live. So I prophesied as he had commanded me and the breath center, entered them, entered them and they came to life and stood on their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Look, they are saying, our bones are dried up and our hope has perished. We are cut off. Therefore, prophesy and tell them that this is what the Lord God says. Oh, my people, I will open your graves and bring you up from them and I will bring you back to the land 
of, of Israel. Well, man, not just the graves opening, lives being restored, bones. You know, it's amazing that it said that they had the bones, they had the body, they had the look, but they didn't have the breath. And there are many people walking around that don't have anything to live for, so they think. And they believe they're walking around, they, they're there, but they're not there. You know, they're in the marriage, but they're not in the relationship. And, and we want you to know, we begin to speak and declare the breath of God, begin to come inside of them that they can live. It, it is the same as what happened with Adam in Genesis 2, 7. That Adam, when Jesus, when God breathed in him, Adam became a living soul. That means everything around him, he was, it was okay for everything around him, but he wasn't okay for life until he received the breath of God. Uh, what, a, what a tragedy to live this whole life in a shell and never experience the great breath of God, never experience the passion of God. I pray that, that today as, as the spirit of God is upon, was upon Jesus, that he was anointed. He was anointed to preach to us. He was anointed to bring forth the good news as, as the gospel comes forth. And, and I had gotten past this point, but I, I want to, to go back to it because uh, in Luke chapter 4, verse 18 through 19, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal broken, heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. It is Jesus that takes us like God did with Adam in Genesis 2-7. He heals the brokenhearted. He come to heal the brokenhearted. Jesus is not out to break your heart. He is the healer of the broken heart. From just existing to having a living soul. God, I want to I wanna, I wanna feel the joy of, of raising my family. I want to feel the joy of, of my marriage. I want to feel the joy of my calling. The joy of, of what you've put, put on me to do in this purpose. I, I need that again. Lord, I surrender to you. And he came for that. To be able to place you back in that joy and that expectation that the spirit of expectation would be upon you. The purpose is awakening with, with the breath of God. And, and when that breath hits you, the breath of God hits you, the, the purpose of God will come with you. And that's what I believe happened to me in that service. As that young man began to share about the, the power of him forgiving his father, the breath of God breathed on me and began to break years and years of hurt and holding in hurt and pain. And as God began to release me, then the purpose for what I was here to do began to manifest and come forth. There is nothing capable, there's nothing capable of putting us together more than the creator, the one who built us from the beginning, the one who, who started us from the very beginning before we ever were here, we existed. The Bible says that in Jeremiah, that we, before we, before we were in our mother's womb, God knew us. Jesus didn't come to break man. He came to restore us to be with him in eternity. It is, a, it is a blessing to know that no matter where you've been in life, no matter what you've been through, God still has his plan in place for you. That there's still a purpose. There's still a, a life to have. There's, 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 a, there's, a, there's a plan for God. There's a plan for you in God's hand that he wants to deliver to you. And you got to understand God remembers you. You're not forgotten. Don't ever feel like you've been forsaken or, or it's over or you're, you've made too many mistakes. No, God came for us as mistakes. God came for us to let us know his grace is bigger than the mistakes we've made, the, bigger than the mistakes we ever could make because it's that sufficient. And as the power of God begins to just come forth, even right now, as it comes forth, you need to know you're remembered. He's putting you back together. He's putting you back together, bringing you together in your soundness and bringing your mind together and letting you know the hope of God is with you. The God who puts us together will always raise us up and bring us through. I want you to know on this Resurrection Sunday, this Easter, is your day to feel connected. It is your day to join in with the purpose and the plan of God. It is your time. It is your opportunity to not feel like an outsider, but to feel put together, maybe for the first time in a long time, as God begins to bring the life back into you. 
And that joyful person, that person who may have felt like you lost years ago, that, that person of peace that, that's been living in anxiety, you may have felt like, man, they've been gone for so long. How's God going to remember me to that? God can do it if you'll just open up to him and give him that opportunity. I would like for you to bow your heads out there and just, uh, we're going to pray and, and just pray for receiving of the word today. Father, thank you. I thank you, Lord God, for the testimony as the thief cried out, remember me. God, I know there are people shattered in so many pieces. They have been broken for so long. How in the world is God going to be able to find me when I'm in so many pieces. I've left so many parts in so many places. But if there's anybody that could find the broken, it's you. If there's anyone that could find pieces that are scattered, it's you. And Lord God, you created us. You always can make that peace even better again. Just pray for the person that's just having a hopeless moment right now. It's just like Man, how could anybody want me? I don't even want myself. I don't even want to remember me. But God is not remembering them, remembering you for your wrong. He's remembering you for what he did right. Not for what you've done, but for what he did. And as he begins to piece you together, begin to piece your mind together, your thoughts together, begin to piece your courage together, and begin to, to make you whole again. And, and that whole feeling of nobody wants me, nobody, no, God loves you. He's calling you to be a part. He wants you to be connected. And I pray, I pray over you right now in the name of Jesus that you begin to receive the remembrance of Christ today. Begin to receive it. If you've uh, never accepted Christ, I really want you to, to really go, go ahead and let God remember you with your soul, with salvation. Father, I just pray for anyone that's out there that, that doesn't know you. I pray right now that they receive you and they confess with their mouth and believe in their heart that Jesus is Lord and they accept you as their Lord and Savior. Father, to be born again. And they understand that you, Father, leave nothing out, that you give all that you all, all that you are to us. And Lord God, that together we receive it with them as we pray in agreement. We thank you for Resurrection Day. We thank you for this Easter, that there are many all over the world being blessed as you're healing our land and restoring your people. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, and we will see you in our next service.